book. It's a brilliant title. Well, thank you. Because it kind of perfectly encapsulates the mindset of all these guys, doesn't it, in Wall Street. Right. They simply never imagined that any of them could fail in the way that Lehman Brothers failed. You, you could call it failure of imagination, but you know, uh, you're right. Uh, too big to fail the title. Uh, my editor actually hated the title when we first uh, started the book, but I always thought about it not about the institutions themselves, which were too big to fail, but about people mm. who in their own way thought that they were too big to fail and couldn't accept the reality of sort of what was happening to them. Mm. I mean, James, you're from a business which is not dissimilar, I would argue, to Wall Street. It's full of uh, lots of big egos, yes. lots of narcissism, lots of people who, who themselves would assume they're too big to fail. And also a, uh, a sign curve that's very much, sign curve of success and failure that's very much like the world of economics where, you know, you're as good as your last movie, you're as good as your last earnings quarter, whatever. Um, uh, one of the things that I had said to Curtis when I first uh, started to play Dick Fold, who's the sort of the bête noire of the, of the piece, uh, that I thought it was a very Shakespearean story mm -hmm. because these people have these tragic flaws, it seems. And I'm not, I don't think that, for example, that Mr. Fold was a, an evil person. In fact, if anything, he had serious errors in judgment where he was trying to protect his stockholders mm -hmm. as well and wouldn't take certain uh, uh, acceptable offers on, on the stock as it was making a free fall uh, to precipitate this crisis. Um, but in our business, I've seen it so many times where, I mean... Um, uh, uh, the fellow who was the head of uh, Columbia, David Beagleman, mm. was on top of the world and started, remember, kiting checks that, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, uh, Cliff Roberts and so on, and ended up committing suicide. I mean, there, there are legendary Hollywood Babylon stories, and I'm sure there are some Wall Street Babylon stories, and this remarkable book. Mm. Uh, and, and, and this is something that's important to point out, by the way, because really we're talking now about the entertainment that mm. we made here uh, for HBO. Uh, I thought, how could anybody pull this incredibly complex story together a, which he did remarkably, mm. and B, make it exciting. And this thing is like All the President's Men. It's the most exciting thriller. The great disconnect during this period was the idea that we bailed them out and we're still living in this sort of 10%, 9% unemployment yes. world. Yeah, it didn't and, do yet we're, and yet we're watching... Not Dick Fold, but the, uh, many of the other bankers, many of the characters yeah, in the movie, you know, you who know. now have huge bonuses yeah, all over again, and you, it doesn't feel like we've changed anything. We've changed nothing, and you know all these guys. I mean, my argument is not that Goldman's was bailed out. That may well have been the right thing to do, right? right? But you I, needed to I, add some strings. You needed to, you no, needed to change. you need to add absolutely strict regulation right. that once they're back on their feet and they're making money again, they do not hand out these bonuses for the next five years. The money is divided amongst all the people who've helped bail them out, who've right, been chucked right. out of their homes. Right. That's what should have happened. See, here's the problem with, with what's happened to our culture. You're not required to be ethical, mm. but as long as you're legal, you know, you can have lawyers. It's amazing. If you've ever been through a lawsuit, the lawyers will coach you without coaching you. Okay? Well, the lawyers just want to rack up money. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the problem is everybody the ethos that. hasn't changed. Who do we blame? Is it President Bush who got us into the mess? Right. Or is it President Obama who, when he sorted the mess, didn't put the regulation in to prevent exactly what's happening. A lot of people, right lot of people thought it started way before Bush. It was well, started Clinton, Barney Frank but, but and you, Clinton. I mean, the point is, it's but apolitical. That's who, one who you're saying politically. Well, the, see, I don't want to get too reductive. Oh, I think oh, you have to, oh. there's a lot of people to blame on the way in. There was a perfect storm on the way in. You can blame Greenspan. You can blame the rating agencies. You can blame uh, Congress. You can blame the, the bankers that went wild, the Freddie regulators Mad, who weren't Freddie minding Mad. the store. But the, right. the question today is, who do, you, who, who do we blame for not changing the system for the next time, for the next too big to fail? And that, that are the folks that, that are in Washington today. That is the administration today. That is a group of people that has not made all of the real decisions that need to, get, that need to be made. And we now have the same, you know, the same folks who are at the scene of the crime are on the police force. Ben Bernanke is still there. Tim Geithner is still there. And I don't think that they've pushed the needle as far as they need to.